Hi, Robert Medlin here. Um, you know, today I want to talk about the cure for racism because racism is pervasive, and uh, it's not it's not what you think all the time. Uh, we're dealing with uh, with complaints against racism in our country now, and and uh, but really, racism is is just everywhere. I remember when I was a uh, a young man. I was born in France, but I went back to France with with my mother. Uh, it was at a time in history where the French were very antagonistic towards Americans. And so here I am. I was born in France. And so I could just feel the anger towards me all the time because I was, I was an American. I wasn't, I wasn't French. And so uh, there, there's just everywhere you look, there's, there's racism. You know, Hitler, Hitler, was, uh, Hitler was a racist. He wanted to get rid of all the, of all the Jews. So he, he, he manipulated things to where he was able to to exterminate seven million Jews because of his hatred for them, and then he was he was going to next uh, try to annihilate Christians because they stood in the way of what he wanted to implement, which is uh, a race. You know his his whole message was race superiority, racism. So you know, racism is is a is bad, and uh, but really there's only one cure for it. And, uh, and it's Jesus. And in uh, Galatians chapter 3, it says that, that uh, in Christ Jesus, we're all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. We're all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And you know, you've taken on a new identity. And it says, for in Christ there's neither Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. In Christ there's neither Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. There's in, in Christ, none of that exists. None of those things that cause distinctions and and prejudice and 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 anger and all that kind of stuff. They don't exist in Christ. If you're a Christian, if you're in Christ, there's neither Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. Uh, there's there's it, we've lost our identity because Jesus has become our identity. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And so that's the way, that's the only way that we can escape from, from racism is to is when we're baptized into Christ, when we clothe ourselves with Jesus, we have a new identity. You know, our identity is not based on whether we're white or black or or whatever. It, it, it doesn't, that, that doesn't matter anymore. We have a totally new identity. It's not whether we're Chinese or Japanese or Indian or, or German or whatever. We have a new identity in Christ. And so uh, that that's the way we escape from this thing of of uh, of, of racial uh, prejudice and oppression and and there's plenty of that everywhere you look. So uh, uh, the Lord wants us to get our eyes on Him. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, then you may not realize it, but uh, but you're not who you think you are. Your identity now is in Jesus. God looks at you and he sees and he sees Jesus. Jesus is in you. Jesus paid for you. Jesus is living his life through you. When God looks at you, he's not looking at at the old you. He's looking at the new you who has been clothed with Jesus. Clothed with Jesus. When Adam and, and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God slew an, uh, a, a lamb and took the skin of the lamb and clothed Adam and Eve. And that that was a, a picture of Jesus when he died on the cross for us to pay for our wickedness. He, he died on the cross to pay for the wickedness of the whole world. All this, God's not counting anybody's sins against them. And so he closed us when we accept Jesus. He closed us with, with, with Christ. And so God sees us in Christ. Our life is in Christ. I get credit for everything Jesus did. Jesus took the credit and the blame for everything I did and took the punishment for it and died on the cross and suffered on the cross. He was beaten beyond recognition as a human being and died on the cross and, and uh, gave up his life for us because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So Jesus paid for us and descended into hell and no one can escape hell. You can't escape hell. I can't escape hell. Jesus did it for us. Jesus descended into hell, defeated death and hell, and rose from the dead. You can't raise yourself from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. And then he ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God 
for us. He did all that for us as our substitute. He didn't have to do that. He created the universe. He didn't have to do that. He created everything we see. He created, he created the universe with, uh, before uh, the universe existed. There was no time and space and energy, nothing. And Jesus created out of nothing by saying, let there be, and it all came into existence. Jesus is everything. But he came and he fulfilled everything God requires for us, for us in our place. So he became our substitute. So uh, if you, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you may not realize it, but, but uh, you lost your identity. <laughs> you may run around in full of selfishness and full of judgmentalism and full of pride and everything else, but, but in reality, you've, you've lost your identity because when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're a new creation in Christ. And so there's neither Jew or Gentile. You're not, you know, it doesn't matter what you're, uh, what you are or what you were uh, you're, you're a totally new person now you're one in Christ Jesus so uh, that's our identity so we can't make judgments uh, as a Christian we can't make judgments about other people because they're, if they're a Christian they're one in Christ Jesus if they're, if they're not they just we just need to cry out and say Lord save them because they need to become a new creature, new creature, a new creation. They need to be baptized with Jesus. They need to be clothed with Jesus. And so that's that's what that's what Christianity is about. Is we're Jesus is our life. He's doing stuff through us. God sees when He looks at us. He sees Jesus. He doesn't see whether you're white or black, or German or Japanese. It doesn't it doesn't make any difference. Uh, he sees Jesus in you. And thank God for that. I thank you, Lord, that, that my identity is in you. My identity is in you. And any Christian, uh, their identity is in Jesus. And if you start looking for your identity in the color of your skin or, or anything else, then you've, you've totally just got about as far away from Jesus as you can get uh, because your, your mind has taken control and your flesh has taken control. And your spirit's saved, you know, and, and Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit saying, hey, come back over here. <laughs> come back over here. You get your mind on Jesus and get your eyes off of those things of your flesh. Get your eyes on Jesus. My wife and I have been so blessed because uh, we've, as evangelists, we've been able to talk to people from all over the world. And uh, we had an easy job, really. The Lord put us in in the Monterey Bay area near Pebble Beach and Pacific Grove and Monterey and and um, one of the most spectacular heavenly places on earth. But uh, what happens is is that that beauty of that place draws people from all over the world there. So Diana and I were evangelists. So so we didn't have to go to the people of the world. The Lord brought the people of the world to us, and so we were able to to minister and share the gospel with people from every nationality, every nation every color uh, we were able to share the, the gospel about Jesus the good news about Jesus dying on the cross for us and it's amazing to me many of the people that come to that area are wealthy but they've got the money to travel and and um, they're well to do and a lot of them a lot of them really didn't have any concept of Jesus at all and uh, and readily accepted when they heard that they were sinners and that Jesus died on the cross for them and paid for them, and he was a son of God. And if they believe in him, they have eternal life. They're going to heaven. So many people uh, from all these nations accepted Jesus. They were in a place where where they were out from under their country's spiritual rule, and, and uh, uh, so that they were just kind of free. And so we were able to just tell them about Jesus, and they were saved. Um, there was one guy... Uh, that we were walking along Monterey Bay there and, and uh, artists would come and display their paintings and there was one guy and, and uh, he had he had these beautiful paintings there and so I was talking to him I said, and, and I said oh you must be a Christian and he said oh no I'm not a Christian I don't believe in that stuff so I'm an atheist and he just and the more I tried to tell him about Jesus the more he just he just lambasted he just he just lambasted me. He said I don't believe in that stuff, you know. It's just a just a, he was he was an atheist uh, professional. <laughs> he was he was just solid in his belief about atheism. And Diana and I, Diana came over. We were both talking to him, trying to convince him, 
you know that that uh, Jesus created this universe out of nothing, and and He paid for us on the cross, and He's wicked, and I, I, everything that we would normally tell someone, you know, about Jesus to to get them to believe, He just rejected it and just ridiculed us. And Diana, my wife, got so upset about it, she just said, "I'm I'm done with you. I'm not talking to you. I'm done with you." And she just turned, spun around, and took off and walked off somewhere else. But I stayed there and talked to him a couple of minutes. And then I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, I'm going to pray that Jesus is going to reveal his love to you, that everywhere you look, everything you see, because you're a painter, that you're going to see the love of Jesus. And he's going to reveal himself to you. And so I said goodbye, and I left. And uh, and and it was just amazing. He was so hard-hearted. Well, about a, a month later, you know, we, we come, uh, we're walking through the area again, you know, we just walk and talk to people and meet people, and talk to them, you know, and some of them were local, many of them were from, were from uh, uh, foreign lands. Uh, so it was just a wonderful time we had. And uh, and all of a sudden, there's the painter, you know, he, he's he's there and he's got his paintings displayed and he, he sees us and he, rec- we didn't really think about him, but he sees us and he recognizes us. He said, he said oh, I'm so glad I, I I saw you. I'm so glad I saw you. He said, ever since you said that about seeing the love of Jesus, he said, everywhere, everything I look at, it's, it looks different now. Everything looks different. He said, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the grace of Jesus. That's the wonder of the message of the gospel, just telling people about the love of Jesus and about the cross. That's what causes people to just experience his love and to be filled with his love. And that's what we all need. But but if you're a Christian, you're not, you know, if you're not German. You know, I was born in France. I'm not French. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm in Christ. I'm clothed with Christ. He's my whole life. And that's the way we look at things, and not uh, and not through racial or any other distinctions, uh, because the devil takes advantage of that. The devil will take advantage of everything that people try to make distinctions about, and um, and they will get on a high horse, uh, a racism high horse. You know, Hitler was a racist. He was a racist against the Jews, and uh, he's a so so racism is evil. And so, uh, uh, people that try to to defeat racism uh, in the natural, they become racist themselves because they attack they attack people that they think are racist, and they become racist. Um, wow, it's just amazing the things that happen. You know that that it turns people that have a good heart, it just enables them to be entrapped into into other things. And and uh, right now, there's a there's a Marxist. Uh, um, nucleus or that's that's a nucleus of of these riots and and stuff that are happening now and the Marxist objective is to overthrow the government through riots <laughs> and so they'll use any excuse so people need to the only thing that's going to save our country the only thing that's going to save you and me and enable us to to work together is to see ourselves in Christ. If I'm in Christ, if I see Jesus in me and my life is in him and not me, then I can't be offended by what somebody says at me. I can't be critical or judgmental about somebody else because uh, I'm I'm saved by faith in Jesus alone. So if we take that approach, um, which is the truth, that is the truth. If anyone is in Christ, you're a new creature. And it says you've clothed yourself with Christ. Uh, that that there's neither Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. There's none of that. None of that. None of no male or female, or or any other gender or whatever. There's no more uh, Jew or Gentile or Japanese or German or Nigerian or. There's none of that. Uh, male or female. Jew or Gentile, slave or free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. We're all one in Christ Jesus. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord, <laughs> I want to tell you that he's clothed you with Him, with himself, with his life. He's come inside of you to live his life through you, to be inside of you forever. And he's become one with your spirit. You're a new, you're a new person. When you look in the mirror, you should just see Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus is... Uh, you're you're still fleshly. 
You still have stupid thoughts. You still do stupid things. But Jesus is in you and he's transforming you. And the scriptures tell us that as we behold Jesus, that we're transformed from glory to glory into his image. We're transformed into his image by observing him, by putting our eyes on him, by keeping our eyes on him, by listening to him. That's what transforms us to be like him and letting him live his life through us. And so, of course, when we when we have our new bodies, you know, when we are resurrected or if when people die, they just step into heaven and they have a new, they're, they're completely new. All the old flesh, this stuff is not going to endure the fleshly stuff. The, it's not going to it's not going to be a part of heaven not going to be anybody in heaven looking at somebody based on their on their gender or race or or whatever uh not going to be any of that so we're just going to be jesus is jesus is going to be in us forever the holy spirit's going to be in us forever and ever we're, we'll be totally transformed but it's in this life we have to do it by faith we have to live by faith and so we have to get our eyes off of comparing ourselves with other people because <laughs> you're going to lose that way. Uh, if you if you just look at yourself as in Jesus and other people needing Jesus, then that's the right perspective. They need him. They need to be transformed. They need to become a new creature in Christ. They need his spirit living in them. They need his life living in them. They need to be clothed with Jesus. And so if we'll just keep that perspective in our prayers, keep that perspective in our dealing with people, you know, you're going to deal with people who are going to be obstinate, <laughs> you know, that, are, that you can't convince, you know, that Jesus paid for them on the, on the cross, uh, like that, like that uh, atheist painter. But my goodness, look what, he, look, look what, look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. Just one word, you know, I just pray that you're going to, everywhere you look, you're going to see the love of Jesus and how much he loves you. And just that one word, and then all of a sudden, I didn't do it. The Lord just opened his eyes to see, to see the love of Jesus. And I pray that the, that the Lord would open your eyes more to see the love of Jesus, to open your eyes more, to see that, that you're really, uh, that, that you no longer live. It's Christ lives in you and that, that, um, that you're a new creation. You've been clothed with Christ. You've been clothed with Christ. You're not who you were. You're a totally new creation. Creation. You can't make a judgment or a distinction about male or female, about race or anything else. Um, um, you just can't. You just can't do that because you're you're in Christ now. I pray that you'd get that revelation because it's it's awesome. It's important to stabilize us because the world is going nuts. And, and uh, keeping our eyes on that, that the world needs the message of Jesus. And right now the devil is trying to take the world. He's trying to pull people's eyes away from Jesus, trying to pull people's eyes onto things that are of the world, the racism and, and all of this kind of stuff. He's trying to pull the eyes of people onto that. And, and the root of that is, the end result of that is, is atheism. And so you, you can't go that direction. So we have to get our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. We put our eyes on him. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We come boldly into the throne room of grace and, and all the promises of God are yes in our in Christ Jesus. It's everything we do we, everything we are is about Jesus. And and our identity is him. I pray that this would sink into your heart that you'd be able to communicate this to other people too because that's the only thing that's going to set us free from racism or any other thing that's going on in people's lives uh, all the evil that the devil tries to bring into people's lives the only thing that will set them free is to just to is to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and believe he died on the cross for their sins and and to believe that he is now in them and that, that he's not they're a new creature they're totally new there's their 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 identity is now in Jesus you've been clothed with Jesus your identity is in Jesus. It's a. It'll set people free. It'll set us free. Set you free, if you can get your mind on it. Because the world right now is a turmoil, trying to pull people away from looking at Jesus to looking at carnal, fleshly things. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just have mercy on our on our country and the nations of the world, Lord. That you would. That you would. Uh, raise up a standard against racism that you would raise up a standard against the 
the the people being drawn into that in Jesus name Lord that that you would be exalted that you would do mighty signs and wonders Lord and miracles all over the world that you would be lifted up so that people can be clothed with you that people could be clothed with you that they could be a, a, a new creation in you Lord in Jesus name so uh, have a wonderful day be sure to vote <laughs> be sure to vote for Trump because that's Jesus has revealed that that's his desire through the prophets and, the, and that's going to happen so God bless you and have a wonderful day mm -hmm.